come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, like, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. Today, we have New York Rangers news to discuss, breaking news from New York. The Rangers have traded Nils Lundqvist, fielded a first-round pick in return, and it is a conditional first-round pick. Top 10 protected. We'll get into all the details for that. But they also re received an additional mid-round pick, which is a 2023 fourth-round pick. Uh, so super great trade there. A lot of people are saying Chris Drury fleece, saying that the Stars were fleeced. He was traded to the Dallas Stars uh, in this trade, and a lot of people are really excited about it, and so are we. But we're going to dive into all of the details of the trade in just a second, give our thoughts and opinions on it. But before we do that, Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's been a crazy 20 for the NHL in general. Um, you know, I just rolled out of bed to record this when I saw that Nils was traded open up Instagram, and then I see Keith Yandel, Zidane Chara, and P.K. Subban all retired, who, you know, makes me feel old. You know, I grew up watching those guys play. But uh, congrats on a great career to them. But, you know, very exciting. We have actual Rangers news to talk about instead of just random speculative videos. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm ready to get into it. For sure. And we'll go ahead and dive into the uh, details of the trade right now. The conditions per the New York Rangers press release is as follows. If the Stars pick in the 2023 draft is in the top 10, the Rangers will get Dallas's own first round pick in the 2024 draft instead, and the pick will be unprotected. So it's a 2023 first round top 10 protected pick. If it's inside the top 10, Rangers get a 2024 first unprotected instead. But if it's outside of the top 10, the Rangers will be picking with that pick in the 2023 draft. So let's say the Stars finish 11th. They have the 11th pick. The Rangers will be picking 11th with the Stars pick. Now, if they finish 5th, they have the 5th overall pick. Dallas is going to keep that pick, but the Rangers are going to go ahead and get a 2024 unprotected first uh, in exchange. Now, second term of the agreement. If Nils Lundqvist produces 55 points cumulative over the 2022 to 23 and 2023 to 24 seasons, Dallas will transfer its own third round pick in 2025 instead of the fourth round pick in 2025, which is a super important detail as well, because not only is this predicated on how well the Stars team actually does, but now there are conditions and terms within this trade uh, regarding how well Nils Lundqvist himself performs. New York is now slated to have seven picks in the 2023 NHL entry draft in Nashville, including two first-round picks, one in the second and third, as well as two six-round picks and a seventh-round selection. So really, really exciting. If we're taking a, a look ahead to the 2023 offseason, the Rangers have a lot of draft capital. Uh, that'll also become very important once we get into the midway point of the season, start talking about the trade deadline. The Rangers have a lot of ammo to make some moves now. And not only that, they have a lot of draft capital to go ahead and draft some very solid prospects in next year's draft. So, Eric, what are your thoughts on those conditions to this trade and really to the number of picks that the Rangers currently hold? I mean, it's very exciting. I think the conditions are perfect. Um, we speculated – um, when the trade request was put in that we might just get like a top nine player, um, someone young. And we were really hoping not to just get draft picks in return, but seeing the actual draft picks that we got, um, you know, I, I'm not mad about it. I'm very satisfied. It's like Chris Drury was hired, made one bad trade in his first week. And then he said, yeah, I'm never going to let that happen again. Um, every single trade that Drury's made since has been perfect in my opinion. So I'm very excited about this. And um, it's also good to see the amount of draft picks that we're going to have in the draft next year. Because from what I've heard, the research that I've done, the 2023 um, prospect pool is very, very talented. I would say almost on par with the 2015 one, which I think was the greatest of all time. Um, so just to see the amount of picks that we have and like the potential to have a like two first round picks next year, um, very exciting. And I think that we can really boost our team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all the draft capital, not only is it going to be useful for fielding these great prospects coming out next year, as you just mentioned, Eric, but again, like I said, they could potentially move these picks to get some 
quality established players within the NHL, mm -hmm. which is super, super exciting. I know that we've made a couple of trade rumor videos. Could the Rangers make this big blockbuster trade? Could they make this low key trade? All that kind of stuff. Well, now they really have the draft capital to get some of those big deals done, which I think is super exciting. Of course, let's go ahead and discuss those Lundquist, what we think that we're losing in those Lundquist uh, rather than gaining. We know what we're gaining, some really great draft picks. And in my opinion, I think that the value of those draft picks surpasses the value of Nils Lundquist, especially for the Rangers, who probably weren't going to be playing those Lundquist at all. I don't think he was going to be seeing any playing time in the regular season. I know, uh, obviously, rookie camp just happened. Clearly, he didn't turn any heads to such an extent where the Rangers felt like they needed to keep him. Moved on from him. But let's go ahead and discuss what we are losing from him and how we might be able to supplement that and what we could do in the future to regain some talents like this. Nils Lundqvist, 22 years old, 28th overall pick in the 2018 draft, has two years left on his entry-level contract with an AAV of 925000 Eric, what are your thoughts on letting those Lundqvist go? Uh, do you think that this is a loss that we will feel, or do you think that this was a move that ultimately needed to be done? I think it's ultimately something that needed to be done. Um, it would have been nice to keep him, just to have him as like a backup defenseman. But as we've said in the past, the the pipeline to get onto the Rangers' like defensive lines is very packed. We have a lot of great young defensemen from our, our rebuild that pretty much just wrapped up last year. Um, and, you know, it was just a big question, like Zach Jones or Nils Lundqvist, who do we think was going to be the one to play next to Braden Schneider? Um, and I guess this kind of just solidifies that it is going to be Zach Jones to start the season next to him. But, you know, it's something that had to happen. Nils wanted a top four role, but, you know, that's already filled. We have players like Fox and Truba and Linger and, and Miller. So if he wanted the playing time, he made the right decision to file a trade request. And I think it's a win-win for both sides. Nils will get what he wants, and we got a great return for it. Yeah, and I think we can kind of roll this into a mini discussion about Zach Jones as well, who's been doing great things at rookie camp. Um, he's actually been wearing the C, being a captain over at rookie camp. Here's a quote from Zach Jones. It's a tremendous honor for me to be able to wear that C and lead these guys, end quote. And another quote from him as well. Quote, everybody's trying to get that step up. Everybody's trying to prove why they can make the NHL. End quote. So Zach Jones really doing a lot of great things out there at Rangers rookie camp. It seems like it's going to be either him or Robertson taking that role uh, alongside Braden Schneider, as Eric just mentioned. But, you know, moving on from those lung quests made it pretty clear and obvious that Zach Jones is obviously making himself as an established presence within the Rangers locker room and really turning some heads over at rookie camp. I think that he is going to be the guy next to Braden Schneider. It's really just him or Robertson at this point, in my opinion. I know that we've talked about a number of prospects, and we've done a couple of videos talking about who's going to play alongside Schneider, but it seems like Zach Jones has really taken on that role. Yeah, I mean, and like you said, it's either Jones or Robertson, but I still think there's like a 90% chance that it is Jones. And, you know, Zach Jones, he didn't even need to be at rookie camp. You know, we, he's played in the NHL already. Um, the Rangers have seen him. They He was not required to be there, but he chose to. He wanted to just come um, get used to playing again, get back into the swing of things and just prove himself a little bit more. So just to see him going to this non like mandatory camp leading this group of rookies is something that's really nice to see. And I think he's definitely solidified his place on the lineup this year. For sure. And here's an exciting little detail from Zach Jones. He mentioned this at rookie camp. Quote, last year I was pretty light. I got pushed around a lot and I took that into account this summer, end quote. And when he took that into account, he decided to gain around 10 pounds a summer. So he's coming in around 180 pounds, 10 up from last year. And that's definitely going to give him much a much greater advantage when you know you're talking about playing with some physicality on the ice so that was definitely an important detail to note there but zach jones is a player that we're super excited in and i think you know as we continue to keep an eye on rookie camp and then of course training camp and preseason that's a player that i'm definitely keeping a very close eye on and seeing how he can perform going into this 2022 season but again Huge blockbuster, not really blockbuster, but huge trade here for the Rangers. I uh, wouldn't call it a blockbuster, but it certainly could be considering the Rangers got a first round pick out of it. This could mm -hmm. potentially down the road be considered a big time gain for the Rangers, oh. depending on who mm -hmm. they use these picks on. Yeah, this like especially in the NHL, this happens all the time. You'll see like a minor trade for picks, but then, you know, they get drafted and then more players get traded and there's this huge trade branch that comes out of it. This has the potential to be one of those things. <laughs> yeah, I could see definitely a big trade branch coming from this. Again, those those picks that the Rangers got are 
phenomenal. The, mm-hmm. the conditions of this deal were really in favor of the New York Rangers, in my opinion. Now, of course, Nils Lundqvist is a very talented player. There is a chance he turns into something special for the Stars. But again, the Rangers have really solid depth on their defensive lines. So they didn't need Nils Lundqvist. They could let him go somewhere else, develop there, and just get some draft picks out of him. When we discussed this, we did not think a first-round pick was even a possibility. Mm-hmm. I think when we talked about it, we were like, oh, maybe they'll get a third-round pick, you know, maybe a second if they're lucky. They got a first and a third, which is super, super exciting. So yeah. I think the conditions of this deal were perfect for the Rangers, and I think this might be a Chris Drury fleece. What do you think? Definitely. Like I said, Chris Drury made one bad trade and refused to ever let it happen again. Every single trade's a fleece. <laughs> Chris Drury fleece. I think Chris Drury has just done a phenomenal job as the GM of the Rangers. Yes. He really has. I mean, building this team almost overnight, becoming, I think, you know, starting to become a powerhouse, you know, in the NHL <laughs> with these young guys. Of course, the kid line took the league by storm last year. Igor Shesterkin had a career year. And now I think we're heading into this 2022 to 23 season feeling pretty confident. Yeah. First, first preseason games in six days. Yeah, it's right around the corner. Of course, we're going to be covering that right here on Fireside Rangers. Uh, we might even do a little live stream. Let us know if you guys want to see us do a live stream. If you're interested in that, we'll go live and we'll chat with you guys in the chat. Uh, about the Rangers preseason matchup, what we think it's going to look like. And of course, once that regular season game rolls around October 11th, we're going to be hyped and we're going to be ready to go. We're going to do some streams and a lot of videos about that. So expect the content to increase, uh, the output of content to increase real soon. So make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any of this great content that we're going to be putting out. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on this trade? Chris Drury Fleece? Or are you sad to see Nils Lundqvist go? Let us know down below. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss a video. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. And let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. He shoots. He's got it. He's got it. Rangers. Rangers.